Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, can my colleagues please uh, share my presentation? Okay, thank you. So uh, as Martin mentioned, uh, I will just briefly present the study environmental destruction uh, in times of coronavirus uh, that we issued last year. Uh, next slide, please. So when the pandemic started, we registered in Arnica some cases of destruction to the environment and human rights. Uh, at first, we noticed that uh, happening uh, in the Czech Republic and in the countries we work in. So we decided to have a deeper look at the whole UNESA region. As you probably noticed, during the pandemic, governments have adopted different measures to, to fight it. Uh, very often walking the thin line between public health and civic liberties. Для того, чтобы бороться с коронавирусом, часто ограничивая, например, человеческие права и свободы. Повышающиеся качество стран в Европе, на Кавказе или в других частях мира перестало уважать те демократические институции или даже начала их открыто нападать. Таким образом, используя ситуацию, которая ослабила общество и когда uh, внимание всех было нацелено на пандемии. Collected 15 cases uh, of uh, damage to the environment and human rights from the in the period from March to October 2020. Uh, as you can see uh, from the map on the right, our right side, uh, along with a state uh, such as Belarus, a state uh, run by illegitimate government, we can see that there are also many EU member states on the list. Uh, we have registered violations of many international conventions, such as the Aarhus Convention, and also violations of uh, European legislation and national legislation. Uh, next slide. So the cases can be basically divided uh, into first group, uh, into two groups. Uh, in the first group, uh, we can see uh, cases where the government misused the pandemic to accelerate changes in legislation and policy that uh, would have a negative impact on the environment and on citizens' rights. Uh, this was uh, also the case of Armenia, where the government pushed uh, a law that would restrict the provision of environmental information. Uh, and my colleague Inga will uh, later on uh, present it and go uh, into more details and give an update on this. Uh, very often the crucial time was timing, when the government actually scheduled the preparation and adoption of important laws to the time when there was a lockdown imposed or even uh, when there was a state of uh, emergency proclaimed, uh, basically hoping that the laws would uh, pass unnoticed. This is something uh, would happen also uh, in the Czech Republic uh, when the new building got that uh, very much limits the space for civic society went through the last common procedure in April uh, 2020, so in the full pandemic. Uh, something similar also happened in Greece, and this is also a case that will be uh, mentioned later by my colleague from WWF Greece, so I will not go into more details now. Uh, in Hungary, the COVID-19 pandemic has been used by the government to increase its power mainly through the Emergency Power Acts uh, approved by the parliament at the end of March 2020, and it enables the government to rule by decree until the end of the state of emergency. Uh, where the environment is concerned, all three pillars of the Aarhus Convention were severely weakened. Uh, one of the decree, for, for example, made it possible to start an activity requiring a permit without it uh, through the introduction of a simple notification sent to the responsible authority. In Slovenia, the government took advantage from the pandemic by, uh, by adopting an amendment to the Nature Conservation Act and construction legislation. Uh, again, significantly limiting the space for civic society uh, to participate in environmental decision making. This is also a case uh, that uh, will be mentioned later uh, by my colleague from Slovenia, and she will give an update on it. Uh, in Ukraine, we registered a case where the parliament proposed to cancel the holding of public hearings during the period of quarantine. 
and all the stakeholders were only allowed to submit their comments uh, in writing. This is something that especially in the rural areas where the legal awareness is low and the internet connection is often not available, uh, that's something that uh, seriously impedes public participation in decision making. Uh, however, this proposal was adopted uh, despite many members of the parliament openly opposing it and proposing uh, other options such as virtual public hearings. So the other type of cases uh, that we registered uh, were cases that were directly connected to the fact that civic society was in lockdown uh, and therefore it was easier to carry out illegal activities and also the traditional tools of civic society, such as protest, could not be used at this time or were very limited. Uh, this was also the case of Belarus. Um, the Belarusian government, unlike other European countries, did not impose uh, any lockdown. Uh, however, many people decided uh, to self-quarantine and the state has taken advantage uh, of the situation uh, by persecuting those who still went out to protest. Uh, I would like to highlight here that uh, this situation was not misused only by the government, but uh, also by other stakeholders, such as industries or investors that used it to push through some controversial project. Uh, that was also the case of Croatia and uh, Czech Republic, uh, where an issuance of fast permits happened. In the Czech Republic, uh, it concerned a controversial developer project in the center of Prague. And in Croatia, it concerns sediment uh, extraction from uh, the Drava River. Uh, we have also registered cases of completely illegal constructions. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, construction of two hydropower plants started with no permits issued at all. Uh, and also, um, Many already hot problems intensified during the pandemic when there was no control by civic society. Uh, this was also the case of Bulgaria where the discharge of untreated industrial water into the rivers is a very big and long lasting problem. And this has intensified during, uh, during the lockdown. Um, Something similar was happening in Moldova, uh, where the illegal, uh, illegal timber logging is a problem. And there was also a very significant increase in illegal logging as a direct consequence of this extraordinary situation. And we even registered a case of a thermal power plant uh, that was illegally operating at full capacity uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and again, this was happening during the quarantine where people had to stay home and there was no civic control. So uh, I will conclude uh, because the time is running. Um, so um, the conclusion is basically that the cases of violation were found in the whole UNICE region, unfortunately. Uh, although now the worst pandemic has passed, some of uh, the cases continue and we have to be prepared that we will face the consequences of it for a long time, especially uh, when it regards the changes in legislation. Um, we have been hearing for a very long time that non-governmental organizations are unelected pressure groups and this view also deepened uh, during the during the pandemic. Uh, so the pandemic played bare how deep rooted the view of civic participation as an obstacle and difficulties in many countries. Um, what is not mentioned in the covered in the report, but it's still uh, worth it to mention. Uh, is that uh, the traditional industry, such as automotive industry or airlines, uh, started to speak openly against the policies and measures on environmental protection and, and climate change, using uh, as argument in the need to tackle the upcoming uh, economic crisis that uh, would pro will probably start as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, not all the stories are so bad. Uh, there was also some uh, there was also some positive uh, development. For example, thanks to the pandemic, uh, we have finally opened uh, a systematic discussion about how to actually use the virtual tools and how to lead virtual public hearing to uh, really truly make everybody uh, participate. 
and uh, like my last message is that uh, during these times when the traditional tools of civic society uh, are weakened and public uh, attention is directed somewhere else uh, our role the role of uh, non-governmental organization is actually crucial to monitor and watchdog the damage to the environment and human rights and i will end up here so thank you for your attention uh, you can you can find this study on our website it's uh, english.arnica.org and I will now pass the word to my colleagues uh, from Greece, Slovenia and Armenia, and they will give the update on some of the cases.